Hey Rocky Fork, we're glad that you're joining us today. Uh, we're very excited. Don't forget to grab your communion supplies. We'll have communion later in service. Uh, don't forget to like and share us on all the social media platforms and just get the word out that we're worshiping together online. And man, we are excited about today. We've got an awesome time ahead. Are you excited, Mandy? I am excited because we're going to try something new today. Oh really? Okay. Yeah. Tell so us about it. We are going to have the same lesson whether you're two years old or you're 92 oh, today. Right, and we're right, going to learn right. about the story of David and Goliath. Oh, yeah, that's my favorite. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So we kind of thought it would be fun for our families to take that story and uh -huh. act it out oh. with their family okay. on their own, All right. right? Yeah. So we kind of have an example that okay. we would love to show you guys okay. this morning. All right. Okay. So here, take a look at this. David and Goliath. 1 Samuel 17, page 177. The Philistines gathered their army for war. The Philistine army was camped up on one hill. Israel's army was on another. A mighty hero named Goliath came out of the Philistines' camp. He was more than nine feet tall. He said, I dare the soldiers of Israel to send a man to fight against me. Saul and the army of Israel were terrified. Every morning and evening, Goliath stood there. He did it for 40 days. Jesse said to his son David, Get ten loaves of bread. Take all of it to your brothers. Hurry to their camp. Take along these chunks of cheese. Find out how your brothers are doing. They are with Saul fighting against the Philistines. Early in the morning, David left his father's flock, loaded up the food, and started out. David ran to the battle lines and greeted his brothers. As David was talking with them, Goliath stepped forward. He again dared someone to fight him, and David heard it. David said to Saul, I'll fight him. Saul replied, you are too young. But David said to Saul, the Lord saved me from the lion. He saved me from the bear. He'll save me from this Philistine. Then David went to a stream and chose five smooth stones. He took his sling and approached Goliath. Goliath looked David over. He saw how young he was, and he hated him. He said, why are you coming at me with sticks? Do you think I'm a dog? David said to Goliath, you are coming to fight me with the sword, but I am coming against you in the name of the Lord who rules over all. David ran quickly to the battle line. He took out a stone, he put it in his sling, he swung it at Goliath. The stone hit him on the forehead and sank into it. He fell to the ground on his face. The Philistines saw that their hero was dead, so they turned around and ran away. So that was that was good. You guys did oh, an awesome job. I agree. Job. That was an awesome example. That was really good. Yeah. Really good. <laughs> Little disappointed that maybe your family left off the last part of the story, but it was well, so good. Well, we were just, uh, you know, we were just playing along in a nice way. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't know what you're talking yeah. about. Yeah. yeah. But Chris. I want to up the Andy a little bit. Okay. This okay. week. So what do you got in mind? We would love to make this a competition. All right. All right. Yeah. So I like where you're going. How about this? How about the family that makes the best video of this get some Rocky hmm. Fork swag? Hmm. Okay. Right? Yeah, now I like it. T-shirts, yeah, yeah. some hats, maybe okay. some other things that wow. we can add to this prize package All right. this week. All right. That Let's sounds do that. good. Yeah. Maybe we yeah. could even just, uh, you know, keep upping the ante and making it a little more exciting as the week goes. I don't know. Yeah. Let's see what happens. Let's see if people will join us in this. And I know that you can make this story your own. We had a lot of fun shooting that as a family, maybe with a few moments of frustration. You might see that on the face of some of my kids, but just have fun with it. Dads, be patient, be patient, be patient, but have fun, make the story your own, and just just enjoy learning about the, the story of David and Goliath and getting into the Bible. It's a yes. good time. It's a good time. Yeah, well, so Mandy, we're excited, yep, right. and we want to remind you there are kid lessons for this story at each level on our website. Okay, that You guys perfect. can check out as well. Perfect. Let's just take a second before we get into worship and uh, just pray together, and we'll get started. Father, thank you for uh, the many stories that exist in your Word, and I thank you that they can come to life 
in us and through us. And I pray that that's always how we are living out our faith in you, by living your word. Uh, God, thank you for this opportunity to study together across all ages. And I pray that we'd all be blessed and encouraged to dive deeper and to learn more about you. We ask this in Jesus' name.
Hey Rocky Fork, this is Jonathan and Irene here to share a little bit of communion time with you all. We've been being outside a whole lot um, during the quarantine and we got chickens. You can see our chicken chicken coop and area back here. But there's a lot of projects I've been uh, doing outside and one of them, there used to be a barn that stood right here. You can kind of see where it used to be. And there was a big spot um, over here that had a bunch, a bunch, a bunch, a bunch, a bunch of rock. And really big rock. They had big dogs back here and they were just blocking them from being able to get out and to get under the barn. And so uh, you could just see a few of the rocks as they came up out of the ground and it didn't look terrible. But as I started getting into it and started digging down, getting the rocks out, it ended up being like two feet of rock and about a foot under the dirt that was kind of there the rocks were all cemented together and it was an absolute disaster it was a mess um, it took a lot of work to get it all out of there um, then to refill it back in because they were some massive rocks um, some of them looked okay um, a lot of the underneath stuff was like uh, cement blocks um, concrete blocks and different things that were underneath there and uh, so it was just a, it was a pain it was a pain and it wasn't my fault. It wasn't my fault at all. It was the person before me that had done all this and it kind of is all over the yard. So I'm a little worried about a couple other spots that I got to get into, but this kind of got me thinking about um, Jesus at the last supper at, at his first communion of what's going on. He's, he's going into this spot um, to sit down and have a meal with a bunch of people that have some jacked up uh, lives and some jacked up things that are going on. Um, Judas is there that's getting ready to betray him um, right as he comes into the room uh, a couple of disciples just, just got done arguing with arguing about who is the greatest among them um, Thomas is there that's gonna doubt that's gonna doubt him even though he spent all that time with Jesus he's gonna doubt that he has actually risen from the dead and Peter's there who's gonna deny him three times and Jesus sits down with all these guys that on the surface a lot of us would be man they're awesome they're doing good but underneath it's just a disaster and so as we come to this time of communion, that's the thing that I, I like to think about is that even though all the things that, that I've done that are jacked up, all the sin that I have, all the things that are underneath the surface that maybe at the top it doesn't look that bad, but underneath I'm struggling with, that Jesus invites me to the table to share in communion with him. And as we come to this time of communion, I want you to think about that, that it doesn't matter what you've done. Um, it doesn't matter if everything can be seen um, right from the right from the top that all your sin is laid bare um, to him that he is inviting you to the table to take communion with him will you pray with us lord we thank you so much for the opportunity uh, to gather um, and to take communion even though we can't be together lord that we know that you are with us that you've forgiven us no matter what we've done we thank you for seeing below the surface for forgiving our sin and for coming and sharing in this moment with us we pray this in jesus name amen to build a confident faith in Jesus Christ. Don't lose heart. Be courageous. Don't be afraid. Have confidence in Christ. Jesus has overcome. Jesus is greater. Hey, Rocky Fork. So glad you could join us. Uh, I don't know about you, but I am so pleased 
uh, and so excited when the worship team uh, brings us and the praise. Uh, they're doing such an amazing job. It's, it's a hard task to do, especially when there's no energy in the room. And uh, just if you have opportunity, uh, just, to, just to encourage them, just give them a shout out, uh, encourage them, a text or maybe an email to Jonathan, uh, just letting them know how much you appreciate what they're doing and how they just keep bringing it each week. It's amazing. We continue on in this sermon series called God is Greater, and I'm really excited about today's message because uh, we're going to hit on a very familiar passage that a lot of people are, are, know about, uh, even from their very early age, uh, something you learn in Sunday school, something you learn uh, in, in very early on in your faith walk. Uh, the story is... David and Goliath. And how many people have heard that message? I mean, almost everyone has heard that in some form, some way, that we grew up hearing about David's faith and how he slayed this Philistine giant. And there's so much more to the story than meets the eye. If you want to follow along at home or go back and read this after we're done, uh, go to the Old Testament, 1 Samuel chapter 17, and that entire chapter is dedicated to uh, David and Goliath. I want to apply an extra measure of logic, uh, practicality, and truth to this story. Because this is a really powerful moment. This is a really powerful story. And there are some misconceptions that needed to be pulled out of it in order to make it really believable. This event is so often looked at as a miracle moment. And we don't really think about, can it ever happen again? It's a a once-in-a-lifetime thing. But I'm telling you, this story for each and every one of us, should have impact and some meaning in our own lives because we all have some sort of giant. You see, David is not a little boy when he kills Goliath. Now, this is probably uh, going to blow up some of your uh, thoughts uh, that you grew up with and knowing in Sunday school, uh, seeing this picture, this image in your head that that David was this little boy uh, standing before this great big giant. When the reality is, he's probably between the age of 17 and 19. The reason why we know this is if he's uh, going along with the rest of his brothers, all, uh, all four of them are serving in the army. and You have to be the age of 20 years old in order to serve in, in the Israel army. Uh, he's just not old enough. He can't enlist. He's underage still, but he's not a little boy. Now, I know it blows up some of our Sunday school images, I know that that was the image I had of King David uh, as, as he stands before this giant. And many of you may know the story where he is standing before uh, King Saul and Saul tries to put his armor on him and begins to fit him up with this. And I had this image in my head that, that, that King Saul was putting this full-size man armor on this little boy. And it just didn't make sense in my head that that would even happen. What's the point? It would look ridiculous for a little boy to, wear, to be wearing a full-grown man's uh, suit of armor. And I don't think that's what happened. I think I think David is a full-grown man, still underage and serving the army, but he's there. And I want you to allow this story to make some sense. That this, if we really put it in context of where David's at in life, this all begins to kind of pull together. What makes sense is that King Saul is putting his armor on a full-grown young man. But David refuses the king's armor because, one, he's never worn it before. He feels like it's going to handicap. It's too restrictive. Besides that, can you imagine in the Middle East, I've been there, it's hot. And, and, and if somebody was to, to try to put me in their armor, their hot, sweaty, stinky armor, I'm going to say, no thanks, king dude, I don't need that. So preliminary, the, the fight stuff is all done, right? It's time to rumble. It's time for David and Goliath to enter the ring and go at it. Now, David's in his late teens. He's not old enough to serve in the army, but he's bold enough to know that God is greater than any giant. That's really what I want to focus on today, that God is greater than any giant in our lives. 
In 1 Samuel, we see uh, David do the first thing he does in preparation for this battle. In verse 40, he goes to the creek and picks up five smooth stones and puts them in his bag. Now he's got a, a, a slingshot with him. Why five stones? Why not just one? Listen, it's way smarter uh, and to have more ammo than less, right? You can ask any soldier, any policeman, what's worse, running out of ammo or carrying more ammo? It's always better to have more. Now, Goliath is on the other side of, of the line. He's already suited up for battle. He's ready to go. And Goliath is, remember, is nine foot nine inches tall. I did some study this week and realized that the largest man who ever lived in the past hundred years, his name was Robert Wadlow. And Robert Wadlow was from, actually from really close by. He was from St. the St. Louis area called Alden, Illinois. He was nine foot, 11, sorry, he was almost nine foot. He was eight foot, 11 inches tall, one inch short of nine. Robert Wadlow was only 22 years old when he died because he had an infection in his leg because of the braces he had to wear. He's the tallest photographed human being who has ever lived. Now, unfortunately, we don't have any senior pictures, pictures of, uh, of Goliath. We don't have any family photos of Goliath and his family. But here's, uh, here's uh, something that's interesting. Here's one of Shaquille O'Neal, Shaq, standing next to a wax model of Robert Wadlow, the tallest man we know. And just to give you some reference, Goliath is 10 inches taller than Mr. Wadlow. Now, I don't know about you, but I grew up thinking that Goliath was unbelievably big. But it appears Robert Wadlow was only 10 inches shorter than Goliath. So is it plausible that, that Goliath was actually 9 foot 9? I think so. He's a huge freak of nature, that's for sure. Uh, but but it's, it's possible in light of Robert Wadlow's size of being almost nine foot himself. I believe also that, that Goliath had four other giants who were uh, relations or family of his, descendants of the same place, a place called Rapha. Now if we go to uh, 2 Samuel chapter 21, verses 16 to 22, I want you to follow along because I'm going to butcher their names. Uh, so I'm encouraging you to go ahead and laugh along with me because uh, these are really hard names to pronounce. The first one is this, and I'm going to try my best, and then I'm going to give you the second one, which I think it is. Ish, Ishbai Benab. I look at it, and I think Obi-Wan <laughs> Kenobi, <laughs> or Obi-Wan Benobi, one of the descendants of Rapha, whose bronze spearhead weighed thir uh, 300 shekels. That's about seven and a half pounds. And he was armed with a new sword. He said he would kill David. And I wondered why. Why would he want to kill David? Well, could it be because he wants to kill David because David killed his brother Goliath? But the son of Zeruiah came to David's rescue and he struck the Philistine down and killed him. Then David's men swore to him, saying, Never again will you go out without us to battle so that the lamp of Israel will not be extinguished. In the course of time, there were another battle, that one with the Philistines at Gob. At this time, Shebaiki, a Husanthite, killed Saf, one of the descendants of Rapha. In another battle of Philistines at Gob, Elinon, son of Jer, a Bethlehemite, killed the brother of Goliath, the Gittite, who had a spear of a, with a shaft when the weavers, like a weaver's rod, in still another battle which took place at Gath, there was a huge man with six fingers on each hand and six toes on each foot. Scripture says they're 24 in all. Now you can't make this stuff up. I've heard of six-toed sloth, but not a giant. He also has descendants from Rapha. 
And when he taunted Israel, Jonathan, the son of Shema, David's brother, killed him. These four descendants of Rapha in Gath, and they fell at the hand of David and his men. Maybe when David picked up those five stones, he knew that Goliath had four brothers and that they would come for him. We all know that David kills Goliath, and it's an incredibly courageous act of faith. In, in 1 Samuel chapter 17, verses 4, uh, 48 through 49, it says this. Here's the battle in itself. It's all encapsulated in this couple of scriptures. As the Philistine, Goliath, moved closer to attack him, David. David ran quickly toward the battle line to meet him, reaching into his bag, taking out a stone. He slung it and struck the Philistine on the forehead. The stone sank into his forehead and he fell face down on the ground. David became a hero instantly. But it was God who was victorious. But this is where the story becomes less about David and more about each and every one of us personally. That's what I believe. And how many of us have some, some giant that stands in the way of us truly following God? In our hearts, we want to pursue God like David did, but our want to is often overshadowed by the giant that stands in the way. I want you to take an introspective look at your own life. What are the giants that stand in the way? The problems, the obstacles, the challenges, the things that seem too big to overcome. We all have them. Maybe it's a mountain of debt. A broken marriage that seems too far gone to rescue. Maybe it's a life of regrets. Maybe it's health concerns that can't seem to be healed and it's something we just have to live with. An addiction that we can't overcome. A depression that defeats our spirit. Anxiety that paralyzes us. Maybe it's a fear of measuring up or being alone or a failure or not being loved. You see, we all have some sort of giant that stands in the way of us pursuing God and pursuing His heart the way He wants us to. It reminds me that when David got to the Israelite camp, they had been, they had been there camping out with all the soldiers for 40 days and 40 nights. They are locked in a stalemate. Neither side is winning. They're just camped out there. They're just hurling insults back and forth. Nobody's moving the line anyway. And they're just stuck there. He didn't just show up ready to fight. You see, Goliath is saying things against our God. He is taunting and disrespecting God for 40 days. So when David shows up and hears these words, something inside of David's spirit was ignited. A courageous flame to be bold in confidence. To know that God is greater than any giant. And friends, this is the whole point of this sermon series. That we would have some sort of an awakening inside of our own hearts. So a, war, a warrior spirit would be uh, born inside of us. That our God is greater than any giant we may face. If we truly believe that, if we trust and pursue a relationship with Jesus Christ, then there is nothing Scripture says that can separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Not a thing. But each of us, we have to decide in our own hearts what we're going to do. There's a decision point. Just as David had to be convinced that God is greater, he stepped out of the crowd. He stepped out of a uh, 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 crowd of men and he took on this giant that stood in his way. I don't know about you, but there are so many times in life where I have shrank back, fell back into the crowd, when I knew that the right thing to do was to step out. And how many times have you and I 
faced our same sins, our same worries, our same anxieties, our same problems, and we've chose to step back instead of stepping into the fight. You see, pursuing the heart of God requires life-changing actions. It requires faith and strength that is not within ourselves, but is from God. But I'm not telling you anything new. You know your giant. Your giant taunts you every day. Every moment, you, every morning when you swing your feet out of the bed and put them on the floor, your giant is awakened. He reminds you of your failures, your loneliness, your discontentment, your health problems, your financial burdens. He brings you bills that you can't pay. He shows you regrets from your past, people you can't please, addictions you can't resist, pornography you can't turn off, a past you can't escape, and He presents this to you like you cannot do anything to change it. Now you could continue being the victim or you could be like David and refuse to take that role because you know that God is greater. For many of us, this seems impossible. It seems so overwhelming, so big. And I wonder if that's the same thing. If any hesitation was in David's heart, he sure doesn't show it. I think he has that kind of faith and that kind of, that kind of attitude, that kind of movement. And maybe you're saying, I have tried everything to defeat my giant. But I love what Jesus says to his disciples in Matthew chapter 19, verse 26. He says, with man, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. David was not alone on that battlefield. We should never come to that place and we say, well, David was so great that he beat Goliath. No, David was the one who stepped out on faith with God to defeat a giant because he knew that God is greater. We too are never alone. There is victory in Christ and only in Christ. Our God, my friends, is greater. Let's pray. Father God, we love you so much, and I thank you for the message of hope and of strength. That Father, in our weaknesses, you are so much stronger. Father, help us to confront our giants, the issues that stand in the way from us truly following you. Father, help us to move past our fears and our worries and our concerns and the issues that, Father, we would strive and move forward in faith with you because you are greater than anything that stands in our way. Father, we love you, and we pray all these things in Jesus' name.
Rocky Fork, thank you for joining us for our online service. We really appreciate it. I just want to encourage you um, to keep uh, sharing our service out there, um, whether you're on Facebook or other social media. Share it with your friends. Send it, send it in text messages, however you need to, to make sure that we're getting the word out of what we're doing right now. Hopefully it won't last much longer, but for now this is kind of the new normal. I want to encourage you also to don't forget that um, we're challenging our families to reenact the story of David and Goliath and submit it in. I know um, Chris and Mandy are putting together some wild um, prize pack um, for the winners of those things, and that looks like a lot of fun. I know Chris and his kids had a lot of fun doing there, so I encourage you those things. Some other things we've been getting in, we've been having people asking us, how can we keep learning? How can we keep uh, getting involved in some different stuff and learning more uh, as we're in this time where we're kind of stuck in our homes? I want to remind you that we have Right Now Media as a church. We pay for all of that. It is completely free to you. Um, we'll, have, we'll be sharing some stuff on Facebook about how to do that. I'll put some stuff at the end of the service, um, how to get a hold of that Right Now Media stuff. It's on our pre-service slides as well. Um, contact us so we can get you signed up for that free software. It is Netflix um, for Christian learning, basically, if you will. And there's a whole kids section on there as well. And there's all kinds of stuff. There you can watch more information about David and Goliath on uh, the Right Now Media website. So I encourage you to get, uh, get, a, get plugged in with that kind of thing. Last thing I want to talk to you about. And uh, just this is something that this story of David and Goliath means a lot to me. If you don't know, my name is Jonathan. My middle name is David. And uh, so the story, you know, Jonathan was David's best friend. So the story has always meant a little bit more to me just because those are who my namesake is after. And this idea of what are the giants in my life. And I love that Mark just kind of just laid it out. It is anything. And he, at the very end he said, you know what your giant is. You know what your giant is. So you know exactly what to be praying for God to intercede in your life and to help take care of. And that's what I want to do right now. As we um, finish up our online service and we get ready to go on about the week, let's pray that God will come into our lives this week and help us defeat those giants. Lord, we thank you so much that even though we are separated, that we can be together in spirit and in truth and hear from Mark on how you are greater than our giants. And we know what our giants are. Lord, and we ask that you come into our lives. You fill that spot. You defeat those giants because we are weak, but you are strong. There are things that are impossible for us, that nothing is impossible for you. Lord, we ask that you defeat those giants so that we may continue to grow in you, learn to love you more, and to seek and follow after you. We thank you for today, and we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a great week, Rocky Fork.